Hey guys, it's Spicy, and today I'm bringing you an advanced Genji guide. I'm going to talk about certain mechanics that you can abuse when playing Genji, and I'm also going to talk about certain concepts that can help you play at a higher level, so you can be a more effective DPS, win games, and rank up. So let's get started. So in this advanced Genji guide, I'm going to talk about combos, ghost dashing, peeling for healers and assisting your tanks, animation cancels, when to challenge characters on the other team, how to build your ult charge more efficiently, and then finally how to have more successful blades. Alright, so let's start by talking about combos. Um, hands down the best combo that Genji has in the game right now is Swift Strike into Fan into Melee. So what you want to do is you want to swift strike and while you're swift striking make sure you're holding fan so before your swift strike even finishes those shurikens are out and they're going towards your opponent and then you can finish them off with the melee now one of the things to keep in mind with this is you have to make sure that your swift strike ends right at where your target is if you overshoot it or undershoot it the combo will not work and it won't burst them down as much as if you were you know to perfectly execute it so to master this, you have to get a feel of Genji's swift strike distance. And the best way to do that is to go into aim arena and practice there where there's a bunch of different real players playing. And it will really get you a feel of using Genji's swift strike and exactly what distance you should be and what combos you should do. Also remember you can swift strike to the ground of the enemy player so that way you won't overshoot or undershoot them and be able to still do a decent amount of damage. The second combo you should practice is fan into swift strike into melee so this combo is really good to do anywhere between 5 and 10 meters where you're pretty confident that you're going to hit most of your fan and then you can just swift strike right to your opponent's feet for example and melee and now all of a sudden you've also done a decent amount of damage in that short distance all right so next i just want to talk about some animation cancels that you can do with genji uh, specifically the one where you can cancel your deflect so this would be for situations where if you're in the middle of deflect and a Zenyatta is holding his right click waiting for your deflect to run out or a Widowmaker is aiming down sight at you and she's charging up her shot while you're in the middle of deflect. So these situations are pretty bad, right? Because they can pretty much get you in trouble. So what you want to do is cancel your deflect by climbing a wall and then swift strike at these targets. So now you're able to trick them avoid the damage that they give out and you're able to dish out extra damage without them expecting it and you're able to kind of get the pick pretty easily. Another time you can use climbing walls to cancel an animation is when you fan melee. If you try to swift strike right after fan meleeing, there's going to be a slight delay before you can swift strike again. You can mitigate this delay by wall climbing right after fan meleeing and then swift striking at your target which will mitigate the delay and help you out for more damage. Now the third animation cancel I want to talk to you guys about is the one with Genji's alternate fire. If you deflect right after pressing alternate fire, it will actually cancel that last bit of the an uh, animation for the alternate fire. And this is a great way to trick your opponents into shooting at you while you're deflecting and get an easy pick because they got tricked, right? Because they were expecting that alternate fire animation to go longer. So they thought they had time to shoot at you before you got your deflect out. But little did they know you canceled the animation and now you're deflecting and they're already shooting so it's game over for them and also guys you can cancel the alternate fire animation by meleeing as well now this is a good time to talk about genji's playstyle. remember low level genjis try to make something happen while high level genjis try to punish if an enemy team is making a rotation and you see a squishy left behind that's your chance to punish them if you see an enemy Anna use her sleep dart and her grenade in a short amount of time and she has no cooldown, that's another character you can punish. If an enemy Reinhardt throws a flame strike at your team, you deflect that and you get a lot of ult charge. So just by doing these simple things and punishing your opponent's mistakes, you're going to find that you build up half your ult charge. Another thing that you can do is primary fire shurikens into the main choke that the enemy is going to be in while using your wall climbing ability and double jump to kind of move around and be a nuisance to the enemy team. When you don't have your ult, what you want to do is you want to use your non cooldown abilities such as your wall climbing ability, your double jump ability, your primary and secondary fire. You want to use these non cooldown abilities to put the enemy in such a dire position that they have to use a cooldown ability 
to get out of it. And then you want to use your cooldown ability, your swift strike or your deflect to counter that. And you want to put them in such a dire position that they have to ult. And now your whole team has the ult advantage. And this is how you create opportunities for your team as a flanker, and especially as Genji. Take this as an example. You're being a nuisance, you're firing shurikens into the choke. And maybe some of them hit the enemy Anna. What is she going to do if she doesn't have heals at her disposal right away? She's going to grenade, right? She's going to grenade the ground. Okay, now... If her Reinhardt gets into too much trouble, she doesn't have that grenade to heal him up quickly. So what's she gonna do? She's gonna nano him so he stays alive. So now indirectly, just by landing a couple shurikens on the enemy Ana, you've given your whole team an alt advantage in the team fight. And also, this is where I wanna talk about two other really good ways to build ult charge and also help your team win at the same time. Because I don't wanna just sit here and tell you to dive mindlessly into the enemy team. So the first way is peeling for your healers. So peeling for your healers, guys, is a terrific way to get picks and build ult charge because a lot of times your healer will be going one on one against the enemy DPS. As soon as you join that fight, it's a two on one and your healer is healing you and you can easily get those picks against, you know, a tracer or a McCree or a soldier. So make sure you peel for your healers. Make sure you're in voice chat so you hear when they're in trouble. That is a very easy way to get ult charge and it's easy ways to get picks that can turn the fight. And then secondly, I want to talk about helping your tanks because this is another great way to build ult charge and maybe start the fight and get some picks as well while you're doing it. So what you want to do is, for example, if you have a Reinhardt on your team, if you see a shield going down, guys, make sure you get deflect ready. So as soon as the shield goes down, you can help him and deflect that damage from the enemy team back to them. That is a terrific time to not just help your team and your Reinhardt, but at the same time, it's great to just build ult because as soon as the enemy sees that shield going down and that shield breaking, they're going to just throw a lot more damage towards it. So this is a great chance for you to just deflect all that damage, get a bunch of ult charge at the same time, and maybe get a pick, who knows. So do a bit of everything guys, you know, dive into the enemy team, do a couple fans into the tanks, swift strike out, help your help your tanks, you know, help your Reinhardt and Orissa deflect some damage, make sure you peel for your healers, you know, be a Swiss army knife. You will realize that you get very easy picks, you will realize that you get lots of ult charge, and you will have blades at your disposal when you need them. So staying on the topic of being an aggressive Genji, this brings me to the idea of when do you dive the enemy characters on the other team. So first off, if you're going to dive, try to communicate your dives with an off tank that is on your team like a Devo or a Winston. That will make a world of difference and just make the game so much easier for you. But if you have the if you don't have the luxury of having an off tank on your team and you have something like a Reinhardt Sigma or Reinhardt Zarya on your team, you should be diving at enemy squishies when A, either their cooldowns are down or B, they have separated from their own team. Because one of the things you have to understand when you're diving is that you're using up your swift strike. So there goes your escapability. So if you dive into a situation that is unwinnable and maybe the numbers are in, in your favor or maybe they all have their cooldowns up, it, it's just not going to be a good time for you because you're just going to feed, right? So it is important to make sure that you dive when the opposing squishy is the most vulnerable. And this also goes for tanks, for example. If you see a Reinhardt that is completely separated from his team and he has a shield up there and he's just standing there, the best thing to do right now is just swift strike through him, even if he's full health because you're probably going to be fine. And a quick tip against 1v1s against Reinhardt, guys. A lot of times, like when he starts swinging at you, the first swing is fine, right? But that second swing is what you want to avoid. So as soon as he uh, swings his first time, if you're in a you know no man's land, as soon as he swings first time, make sure you jump. That hammer is going to throw you two times the distance that if it would have if you were on the ground. So that way you can create that distance and start you know fanning Reinhardt again. All right, now let's talk really quickly about the infamous ghost dash. This is something that you see in a lot of YouTube montages, and you see a lot of top top Genji players do maybe you know in certain situations uh there's nothing wrong with doing it in certain situations if you really are have mastered it because if, if you can do it quick enough then you can avoid certain incoming damage from the enemy character so what ghost dashing essentially is is that you're using swift strike right as it resets and there's no delay so when you do that it kind of cancels out the whole animation and sound so it looks like you're doing it really really fast and but the problem with this is that 
to use it right as it resets, you need to know exactly which direction you should go in. Because if you go into a direction that an enemy isn't in, then you have nothing that you can do and there's nothing for you to swing at and your whole ultimate just went to complete waste. So you really have to, before you take, uh, before you pull out the blade, you really have to take a mental picture of where everyone is on the enemy team and you have to almost predict right after your first swing where they're gonna be and if you if you get that wrong then you just wasted your ult now the best way to practice this guys is to go into workshop and type up genji dash in the search bar and you're gonna find a bunch of workshops that take place in the chamber and this is the best way to train it because it gives you a place where you can do it and it's you know you don't have to wait for cooldowns and everything and everyone's trying to do the same thing this is the best place to practice it and then go into quick play and then practice it there and only take this to competitive if you have absolutely mastered this technique because it's incredibly tough to do and if you get it wrong it can cost your team a whole fight that you could that you could potentially won all right so now that we're on the topic of genji's ultimate let's talk about his blade and let's talk about how you can get the most value out of his blade so you can win your team fights and take advantage of the most powerful aspect of genji's kit so right now in Overwatch, with all the characters that currently exist, for example, like Brick or Doomfist and, you know, various other characters, Genji's ultimate is probably one of the hardest to always pull off because it doesn't take a lot of work for any character to throw you off of your path. And when you get thrown off your path as Genji, you've pretty much wasted your ult because now you're just swinging the blade at open air and it doesn't do anything. And it also doesn't even matter how good your mechanics are as Genji or how how much you've played him um if a brick stuns you out of your ult you're you're kind of there's not much you can do and th this is where skill doesn't really come into play anymore i think and because most people have played so many hours on genji they've kind of mastered the basic aspects of it but i think when it comes to a successful blade most people don't understand the game sense aspect of it and what i'll tell you is to have successful blades you need to make sure that when you ult you're not the first person to ult on your team um that you're like the second or the third unless it's a coordinated ult because most of the time, the opposing players have no problem wasting their own ult to stop you. I can't count how many times in competitive I've seen a Rhine or Zarya solo grab or solo shatter and ulting Genji on the other team. It's nothing new and, and it's actually accepted as a fairly good play because you just stop someone who can wipe your whole team. So that's why when you ult as Genji, like you need to always make sure you're aware of the enemy cooldowns and the enemy ults. And this is where you have to kind of coordinate with your team. Maybe if you have another DPS on your team, this is where you tell them, hey, can you use your ult first and bait out enemy cooldowns and potential counter ults. So then when they ult, I can ult with my blade and actually get a team wipe. And a lot of times nowadays, like if you have a Genji and a Zarya on your team, as soon as the Zarya grabs, most people on the other team will throw out all their ults. This is probably not the best time actually to ult with Genji. Maybe you should wait after everyone uses their cooldowns and then you can ult so now the enemies don't have their cooldowns and they don't have their ults and you can actually get a team wipe. There's been so many times where my team, my Zarya has grabbed and I haven't ulted right away as Genji. I've actually waited till everyone is out of the grab and I've gotten way more value because even though they were spread out, they didn't have any cooldowns. They didn't have any ults. What were they going to do? Best tip I can give you guys to get the most value out of Genji's ult, especially in the current meta where Genji isn't even considered top tier, is that communicate with your teammates so and tell them to use their ults so they can bait out enemy ults and cooldowns and then you use your blade and you can get a team wipe all right guys thanks for watching this advanced genji guide i hope you enjoyed it make sure you let me know in the comment section if i missed anything uh, leave a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't already don't forget to join the discord for weekly community games don't forget to follow my twitch that's where i stream regularly you can drop in and ask me anything you want the links are in the description below anyways guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time have a good one boys